My name is Marie He. I am Manye Bishop. Hello, my name is Kira Woods. Greetings, I am Nalia John Baptiste. Charmaine Wilson. I am Ticey Lorraine Faison. Dr. Pamela Richardson Wilkes. My name is Beverly Bolton. My name is Jackie Slater. I am Alvania E. Durbin. My story began in 1999 here at Edward Waters College. I was hired as the center director for the Shell Suite Community Resource Center, and the position entailed managing and operating the Shell Suite Senior Wellness Program that consists of a clinic, a program operation that provides services for preventative health care and wellness in Duval County. So a little bit about my story. I was born in the U.S., but I was not raised here. So when I was three months, I moved back to my original home where my family's from in Dominica, which is the nature island of the Caribbean. I did some part of a schooling here, but most of my life I lived in Dominica. So in 2017, a Category 5 hurricane hit our island, so I was forced to leave. So I left my senior year coming to New York to finish my schooling. They kind of pushed me forward because it was like, okay, I have all my credits, so why not just graduate? So I did try to rush my senior year. I applied for different colleges, and luckily I was accepted into Edward Woods College on a presidential scholarship. So I came here when I was 16, and then I've just been moving life, getting through life, trying to support myself. I grew up in a four-bedroom, in a four-room house with no running water, no, um, no kinds of uh, what you would call modern conveniences. And um, I didn't know what it was to be poor um, until I met other people who were not. But we still had everything that we needed. And my grandmother, who has an eighth grade education um, and was forced to leave school at eighth, at, during eighth grade, uh, decided that she wanted her grandchildren and her children to have opportunities that she did not have. And so I struggled and I fought to be able to go to school um, in order to basically improve myself. Started out as an architectural engineering major and ended up majoring in English, which led me to be an English professor and now an administrator on the college level. I was getting ready to graduate and I was walking over um, to the Lee Cousin building and the news cameras were on campus and they ran into me and they said, oh, you're graduating? Because one of the anchor ladies were, were a friend of mine. She said, tell me your story, um, graduating at um, your age, going back to school at 44 and graduating at 48. Um, tell me your story. And I said, well, I contributed my graduation to the students at Edward Waters College. There were many days um, in my role as the health service coordinator where we cried together, we laughed together, um, I assisted them getting medical attention that they needed. And sometimes just talking a student back into class who didn't want to be in class anymore. And I think all of those seeds that I sowed into those students led me on the road to Edward Waters College and enrolling. My story, how, I guess, how did I become me? Maybe that, that's a good story. Mm -hmm. How did I become me? Um, through, uh, oh geez, I really don't want to say trials and tribulations because that's just so cliche, but the idea of when you want to be in love mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, okay, well, you know, I got a boyfriend, you know, that was a high school senior, sophomore, I think it was when I had my first boyfriend and for like two weeks, I was like, no, nah, it's too, uh, uh. You got to talk to that person every day. You got to let us. I was like, nah, and I started ghosting him. Mm -hmm. And then by the time I was in college, it's like, did you have a boyfriend? So I was like, nobody, you know, like you go through that process of, does anybody want me? You know, I think that that's, that's a part of um, human. If you want to go academic, Maslow's identification of human needs, um, the companionship and that sort of thing. But when you begin to realize, well, me personally, and it's like by the time you're 30, 40, and it's like, but I gotta love myself first. That's when I know I'm loved. 
being open and honest, yeah, I've gone through that relationship where, you know, you're kind of fat. You did that wrong. Why don't you do this? And all the while, in my mind, those suspicions of, he looking at somebody else, he with somebody else, yeah, he cheating. And it did take me a minute to remember what I told myself years ago. You gotta love me first. Because I was hanging on every word and doubting every aspect about myself because I heard too many times, it's your fault. You the reason why. And all of that. And I had my head held down internally. Because it's easy to put a smile on your face and make everybody else laugh when internally those tears are just rolling. That's not to say that I am fully, fully healed, but I'm better. And I can rely on myself and I have to remind myself, don't go down that path, girl. You gotta turn back around, stay where you is. You are all right. And you can smile with a genuine, honest smile. So I was born here in Jacksonville, Florida. I'm the oldest, well, the second oldest. I have two youngest sisters. I was raised by my mother and my dad pretty much wasn't in my life like that. Yeah. How did that make you feel? Um, sad, uh, try not to get emotional. Because um, when I was younger, I was a dad, a, like a daddy's girl. And see, not seeing him in my life, it kind of affected me in certain ways. But I managed, so. Uncle Barney, uh, sounds funny, but that's his name, Uncle Barney. He was my force and influencer at that time. I was about 11 years old. And um, he showed me some special things to do with the ball. And then I played with my brother, who was also another influencer. He went to the Naval Academy on a football scholarship, so I, I couldn't let him out do me. So I said, I'll get me a basketball scholarship. And we're only a year apart, and we've been competitive ever since that, that time. I love people. I was raised in a family whereby we did what we could while we could for those who were in need. <laughs> My fourth grade teacher, Miss Walker, who was four foot nothing, and she wore four inch heels every single day. <laughs> I had never seen someone like that before. Prior to her, I had male teachers, which is different for most people, for first and second grade, black male teachers. My third grade teacher was a white female, but Miss Walker was a force to be reckoned with. When she walked in the room, it commanded our respects from the, the bully on the yard who was in my class to the most shy person. She made everybody, everybody live up to her expectations. I said, I want to do that. I want, I want to be like her. Now, while I don't have the trust that she has, I found a way. But her demeanor and the way she loved us, unapologetically speaking to us as us as if we were hurt children. I wanna do that. I wanna do that. I wanna teach. I wanna do what she's doing. My family inspires me because no matter what we have been through, especially within my years here at Everwaters College, we have just been able to maintain life and keep striving, even through our heartbreaks, our failures, our tears, we kept pushing through and what doesn't break you makes you. Life is about a lot of changes. I tell my players this all the time. Again, I say it, I use my platforms for empowering my young ladies to be future leaders and be future lawyers or police officers because I do have criminal justice majors. So I tell them all the time, life will throw you curves. You have to adapt change is a, a part of life. So I, I come with the mindset of changing all the time, you know, just adapt and um, just adapt to change and be prepared mentally and physically. Stop trying to live in a box. Stop trying to live based on what society sees us as and always just go out there and try to be more than what society portrays us to be. Keep pushing. Be ready for the obstacles. But if you already got your strength filled up, you can move it. 
even when you don't feel like moving, and that may be the most important part, when you don't feel like moving that obstacle, call somebody. I think that was my biggest problem, like I told you my pre-pre story. I didn't know to call out. I didn't know to shout and say, I need help. I'm drowning. Do not put yourself in a situation where you are trying to work it out alone. Don't let anyone or anything stand in your way. You are your own worst enemy. No one else can tell you what to do or how to do it. So do it with strength, do it with conviction, do it with might and with everything that you have inside of your spirit, soul, and integrity. Do it for you and don't do it for anyone else. And at the end of the day, make your five-year-old self say, you're who you want to be when you grow up. I would say to them, to you, um, to my, my students, former and current, who you all can't see, but I can see them. I'm trying not to tear up. I'm so proud. I would say to you all, you've not had a time like this before. You have so much access, so many things at your fingertips that I didn't have. I was in college before the internet, okay? I know you all don't believe that, but that is a real thing. You get to create your own narrative. You don't have to wait until you're done from college. You don't have to wait. You can do it now. Decide who you want to be. And, and guess what? Tomorrow, if you change your mind, that's okay. That is okay. You have the right to change your mind, but do not let the world shape your narrative for you. Do it yourself. Be intentional. Think about what you're doing so that you have less to regret and more to celebrate. I pour into you what was pouring into me. Not everyone is going to like you, but you, you got to love you. You got to love you because, I mean, who else is going to do it? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. It'd be like, I'm a rebel, I'm a track star. You know that song? <laughs> That's my little go-to song right now, so. Actually, I do, but it's not a she, it's a he, it's William Murphy. And it's like, the song was called Like Never Before. I always put my book, my best foot forward. And um, he, he, he inspires me a great deal. And uh, I listen to it every, it's like a ritual. Before every game, every morning when I wake up. And as I'm riding to work, that's my inspiration. So I worked like never before. <laughs> Any City Girl song um, really just keeps me going because it gets me hyped to understand like, life is just life. <laughs> she Won by Chrisette Michelle. Um, it, is, it, is my, it is my She Roll song um, because it speaks to what women are, who we are, and the fact that we are winning on a daily basis. Not just a daily basis, but on a minute by minute basis. And so She Won by Chrisette Michelle. Love it. We've had several over the years, and unfortunately the one that I think about is, is not sung by a female. It's really sung by a male, and that is Sam Cooke's A Change Is Gonna Come. It just reminds me of hope, you know, so that's mine. To the one who has yet to find their, her story. I ask you to be patient with yourself, love yourself, and I think the word for such a time as this is to abide, abide, abide by what you know. Abide by what's in your heart. Abide with what you've been taught. You already know the answer to the things that you should and should not do. For the places that you should go and should not go. So I would encourage you to abide by the word that's in your heart. Abide by what you know. And as you abide by what is right, and don't get caught up in the world's superfluous little matters. You can get to be a place in 
her story that is valuable to all. Wow. When I think about a man, especially a black man, I understand what it is to be loved by a black man and to be encouraged and inspired by him and for him to always put me first. Encouraged my walk, it encouraged my endurance even now after he is no longer with me physically. But the spiritual walk that we walk together now keeps me going. And I would say to our young black sisters, and even the brothers, be encouraged by somebody who cares for you. Don't walk too fast. Take time to look around and to listen and do not accept the first thing. Evaluate all things. And when you get a man like Mr. Eugene Heath in your life for me, the sky is the limit. The road may be long, but the journey is great. And I loved him so much that I know that I can get there from here because God has me at this point in time. Honestly, empowerment, because I know my voice would matter, um, especially on this campus. Uh, I get so much gratitude from, from students of different sports, students that are regular students, the coaching staff, my administration, um, so empowerment and feeling grateful, humble. Um, positive. <laughs> I can't find it. You're gonna give me tears right now because I just went through something Sunday. So, <laughs> oh. empowerment, uh, positivity, strength, hope, grateful. Um, I'm just thankful. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to young ladies. Don't let people say what people say um, get to you because their opinions does not matter. Their opinion is not fact. It's just an opinion. So don't let people what people say get to you. You're you're amazing in your own way. Let some of that go. Let some of that go. And some of that is encompassed of people who you thought loved you, it encompasses friends you thought you'd have forever. It's okay for the change to happen. It's okay for them to go away. It's okay for them not to be your friend anymore. You've done nothing wrong, and if you've done nothing wrong, let it go. It'll be all right. Number one, lean on your sisters. Um, find individuals that you can lean on um, and if you can't lean on yourself, right? Um, be a giver and not just a taker, but don't be a giver to the extent that you're used. And always don't look at the glass as half full, as half empty, look at it as half full. Um, and know that you can do anything that you wanna do regardless of anyone, any man, any other woman tells you what you can't do because you can do it I promise you, you can. I'm living proof of it. Pay attention. Listen. The wisdom that I've acquired had to do with those who inspired me when I was younger. I didn't always want to hear the truth or get the message because I was all into what I wanted to do. What I wanted to do was not always the right way to go. And I would inspire and encourage our young people to pay attention, be encouraged, and listen to the wisdom of our elders because we've been there, done that, understand that, and moving forward and striving to live as long as we can. At 69 years of age, if I had not had the encouragement of older women and men in my life, I would not be here at Edward Waters College today.